Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? A lot of people, both young and old, they think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure, and I'm going to try to demonstrate that today. We're going to continue our series of 30 favorite albums. These take a long time to do these videos. I work much harder on these, so if you're on board, Thank you. I appreciate your watching. Uh, it takes at least a month of solid listening uh, going through these lists. So uh, let's start with uh, some honorable mentions. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do albums 30 through 21. So I'm going to break this up into three videos. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. And uh, the first one I want to acknowledge is someone we hit up on this channel that I think is a brilliant album, and that's J. Dilla Donuts. So why didn't this make my top 30 if it's such a brilliant album? You know, I was listening to it uh, a couple weeks ago, and the very first song had a sample from 10cc, and I stopped and I went and listened to the 10 CC. I was like, oh, yeah, I want to hear that song again. It's a song called The Worst Band in the World. And then they, he sampled 10 CC on the second track, too. And I was like, oh, yeah, I want to hear that song. So I think the problem is I just, um, uh, I, you know, I want to hear the originals so much. But, you know, objectively, it's just really a, a, a brilliant album. So I wanted to call that out. Uh, another honorable mention, which I've got here with me, is uh, is uh, Ali Farka Touré. So let me make sure if you can see this. Yeah, Ali Farka Touré from Mali, Savan. So this is a brilliant Malian blues acoustic guitar, and uh, he's such a, a genius, but... You know, I, I've been listening to it lately, and it's it's a little bit sleepy, and I I want to like this more than than I do, and I feel a little affinity because I saw his son Vofarka Touré in concert and met him afterwards and had him sign a CD for me. So I'm a huge fan of African music, and I don't even know really where to rank this because you know it's so different than everything else we're talking about. But it's highly recommended. Ali Farka Touré, um, Savan. Uh, the next one, honorable mention, and I can't believe how many CDs that I own are just outside the top 30. But here's the next one, which is the New Orleans album. Elvis Costello and Alan Toussaint, they did an album together after Hurricane Katrina. And it's really enjoyable. It just... You know, it didn't quite make it, but they both sing on the album. It's a little more dominated by Costello, and I'm a huge Elvis Costello fan. Um, I don't know. It's really, really good, but somehow I don't quite connect with it the way I do with my top 30. So uh, that's it. The River in Reverse, which the title refers to uh, the flooding of New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. Another one is uh, Paul Simon, Surprise. And this really pained me. This really pained me not to get this one in because I do like this album quite a bit. Uh, some of the songs, like the opening track, uh, How Can You, uh, what's it called? How Can You Live in the Northwest? Just some really brilliant songs on here. But, you know, maybe a couple of average tracks and it just 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 missed and then uh you know for this year this one kind of pains me too but at number 31 i have a five-star album on all music biggest album of the year and i like it i really like it just missed number 31 amy winehouse back to black if every song was hit me as hard as uh, I'm No Good, that's, uh, is it called? Uh, yeah, I'm No Good. Linda Rodstad did You're No Good. Yeah, I'm No Good. What a great track that is. Um, 
you know, I just kept playing this and playing it and saying it's, it's got to be top 30 album. It's so good. But uh, yeah, I just missed. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I had a hard time listening to the song <laughs> Rehab because I kept shouting at my speaker. It's like, you should have listened to your daddy. Anyway, then I started sound like a old fart. So, uh, but such a such a tragedy. So, uh, two albums. That's all we really got from her. All right. So let's start at number thirty. This one you're not going to. I really doubt that you're going to know this. This is the Chicago jazz artist Patricia Barber. Hopefully, you can see this. And I, I've just got the jacket here because I keep this in a binder, but. This was a really interesting album. She actually, in 2003, was awarded a Guggenheim Fellowship. And I don't pretend to be an expert on that. But she used that money to uh, compose this album based on Ovid's Metamorphosis, a poem from the 8th century, from not the 8th century, year 8 in the Christian era. Yeah, year 8. And uh, it's... It's great. So it's got some, uh, just the bass alone is ooh, excellent bass player. And then she's a piano player and she sings. And then sometimes there's sax, sometimes there's guitar, sometimes there's choir. And she just mixes up different palettes on each one to represent these uh, different characters. It almost reminds me of the Seven Deadly Sins. It's just, there's a song called Hungry for example, about not being able to get enough to eat. And if you like uh, a different kind of jazz, it's vocal jazz. So imagine, if you will, a cross between Diana Krall and Herbie Hancock. And you kind of get the idea because it's, it's a little bit um, in that wheelhouse of Herbie where it's just really tasty jazz. But then her singing style is uh, got elements of pop in it. Okay, number 29, a singer that I just love to listen to. That's Nico Case, Fox Confessor, Brings the Flood. And uh, she said she tried not to make the lyrics too literal, which both improves the album and maybe detracts from it a little bit. I just can't, I don't know, I just... Um, like the, there's no, there's not a single song on the album where I go, oh, I so relate to that song. And yet I just love listening to the album. She's one of my favorite singers, love her. So anyway, Fox Confessor Brings the Flood, number 29 by Nico Case. Coming in at number 28 is one of my all-time favorite artists of the 21st century, Beck. Now this album, The Information, didn't do quite as well as some others. Um, Pitchfork gave it a 6.9, so All Music gave it a 4. But I think, you know, I think it's underrated. And what I want to say about this is that if this was a debut album and Beck had never put out anything before, I think people would give it a much higher ranking. So one of the things that critics do is they'll compare a work to earlier work, and sometimes that's valid if, if an artist's been around a long time, but I think I think uh, this album got knocked a little bit for kind of being a bit of a retread, but it's still a great listen. Um, great, great songs on here. The Information by Beck, highly recommend it. Produced by Nigel Godrich, who does Radiohead. All right, number 27 is another album that I think is underrated. Um, and I'm very critical of this artist's later um, work, but this is Prince, 3121. And um, yeah, I think, I think when he passed away, he had not been doing his best work. Um, but... Yeah, I love Prince. I uh, was fortunate enough to see him a couple times in concert, and those are great memories. I actually saw him twice in the same year. Uh, the tour came through town two times at the beginning and 
the end. And so I went and saw him twice in 1997 on the, uh, what was that called? Jam of the Year Tour. So great. Same set list pretty much both times. Um, but anyway, 3121, it's, uh, it, it, it's great. He plays most of the instruments, but then there's uh, some other musicians on here. And boy, wait for the last track. Because the last track is called Get on the Boat. And this is a killer, killer funk song with uh, Maceo Parker, Candy Dulfer, and two other horn players on it. And, and when he shouts, Maceo, just like James Brown did, and in comes Maceo with a sax, it's just, ah, makes you want to get up and dance. So I think 3121 is a good, solid album, and I think it is underrated. All right, coming in at number 26 is a CD that I own. And it's a band that hadn't done an album in 32 years. That's a long time. So they had a reunion after 32 years. I read, I, I was really surprised. The artist who talked them into getting back together again was Morrissey. Yeah. So anyway, this is the New York Dolls. One day it will please us to remember even this. And this is much better than it than you would expect, than it should be. Hopefully you're able to see that. Uh, my, my favorite song on here is called, it's called Cigarettes and Fishnet and Cigarettes. Is that what it's called? Fishnet and Cigarettes. That's a great song. But um, yeah, and uh, you know, David Johansson's voice is, a little rougher, but it fits the music. This album is loose and a little sloppy, just the way you would want it. And it's down to uh, Johansson and Sylvain Sylvain as the only two original members left. But this is a raucous affair. I mean, even the cover is cool. So I really do like uh, this New York Dolls album. I highly recommend it. Coming in at Number 25 is an album that NPR listeners said was the best album of the year, and I think it's a great album. Uh, but I couldn't quite get it any higher, and that's the Decemberists, The Crane Wife. Real, yeah, just a really interesting album. They're always so literate. Their use of uh, vocabulary... Uh, there'll be another artist on here. I don't want to give it away, but there's another artist on here when we do the uh, second installment who is very similar uh, to the Decemberists in, in that um, this artist does a, uh, a real throwback style to an earlier time in history and uses a lot of really fancy words, has a high vocabulary. But I don't know. Portland, Oregon. These guys don't sound like they're from Portland. I did want to point out one thing that I noticed. I was listening to the song When the War Came. And he took the melody from Led Zeppelin's No Quarter. Check it out. Play, um, play No Quarter by Led Zeppelin and then play When the War Came by the Decemberists and you'll hear the same melody. Yeah, I was really surprised. But plagiarism aside, it's a great album. And, of course, the story of the Crane Wife is such a cool Japanese story. Uh, check into that. Uh, I, I don't. We don't have time to go into the whole story, but it's so cool. All right, number 24 is an album from a tour that I saw. Unfortunately, he was not in great voice, but the band was. And this is Van Morrison, Pay the Devil. Now... I'm a huge Van Morrison fan. I've seen him twice, and this was the second time and the last time that I saw him. This is his country album, uh, three originals, 12 covers, and he's having fun. His voice is cracking, and he's almost laughing while he does this. He's, it's, it's Van not being quite as serious. Starts off with standards like There Stands a Glass, an old uh, track by Webb Pierce from the 50s, and it just goes on from there. And the band is Cracker Jack, the violin, the pedal steel. Oh, it's great. 
you know, and it makes sense. Like there stands the glass as a drinking song. And Van certainly would have grown up with a lot of Irish drinking songs. I'm not trying to make a stereotype here. Uh, the connection between Irish music and country music is well documented. So all, it's, it came down through the Appalachians. And um, yeah, so uh, I think some of those drinking songs you hear in country music, in part, came from... Uh, came from uh, Ireland. So I love it. Um, just a fun, fun listen. And he did um, many of those songs on Austin City Limits. You can watch that. And the band is terrific. All right. Coming in at number 23, another CD that I own. This is uh, Ray Davies' Other People's Lives. So... This is really cool. I had seen him on his tour before, the Storyteller Tour, um, which is kind of like those MTV Storyteller things where he would do a song and he'd explain it first and then do it. And then, you know, half the evening was talk, half the evening songs. And then he put out this album, Other People's Lives. And this was very, this was much more Kinksian, if I can use that word. Um, if you think of the 70s period of the kinks where he was really observing uh, the way people lived, well, you know, including the late 60s, you think of those songs like Terry and Julie, he sings about, and all these uh, different kinks songs um, where he talks about very specific characters and very specific places. He does that um, here. So, for example, there's a song on here called Is There Life After Breakfast? That is such a Ray Davies title. I, I don't know who else would write a song called Is There Life After Breakfast? But, yeah, I sure do love that one. All right. Uh, number 22 is another album that is actually the only other album on my list, I think, that all music gives five stars to. Uh, this is Bonnie Prince Billy, The Letting Go. And he's an interesting dude. So this is a um, sort of a 21st century folk album. It's sexual and romantic and dark, all three of them. So he'll, he'll sing lines where you think, you think to yourself, oh, that's really romantic. Then he'll sing a couplet where it'll be like, oh, he's uh, really pent up. And then you'll hear another couplet where you go, ooh, did you really go there? Uh, where we're delving into the sort of Celtic uh, balladry where everybody meets a horrible end. So, yeah, I love it. It was recorded in Iceland with a producer that had worked with Bjork. And it's kind of hard to describe. You'll just have to listen to it. He's got a very fragile voice. And then there's a woman that sings harmony with him on the album. And it's just bass, drum, and guitar. And some orchestration. That's it. So just three musicians and orchestra on some of the tracks. Very stark, very minimal. Highly recommended. Bonnie Prince Billy. The Letting Go. And finally, coming in at number 21, uh, Donald Fagan uh, with one of his solo albums. He, of course, was half of Steely Dan. This is the album Morph the Cat. And I've just got one note on here. Comfortable. This is right in that Steely Dan wheelhouse. And it sounds terrific. Apparently, this won a Grammy for its sound engineering. So, yeah, if you ever want to test a, if you're shopping for a new stereo and you got a copy of Morph the Cat, bring it in, put it on. Yeah, it'd be a good test CD. Uh, sounds terrific. Of course, I listen to it on stream. I don't own it. But even, even on Spotify, it just sounds wonderful. The separation, the mix, and the balance. And, you know, it, it sounds kind of like a Steely Dan album. 
And it's great for all those reasons. So that, there's a band you either hate or love. But hey, I confess, big, big Steely Dan fan. Oh, I saw them too. Who have I seen on here? I've seen Donald Fagan with Steely Dan, Ray Davies, Van Morrison, Prince, Paul Simon I've seen, Elvis Costello I've seen like three times. So uh, considering that I own a lot of these CDs and that I've seen a lot of these people, kind of surprising they're not in my top 20. Uh, but that's the way it goes. So uh, anyway, I'll go ahead and post this list at the end of the video so that you can recap. And I look forward to uh, talking to you again on part two. Not sure when I will upload that. But uh, if you like what we're doing here, a senior defending the 21st century here with specific examples. And yeah, it's already... 2006 is already 17 years ago, but still considered the modern era. And uh, that's it. So let me know what some of your favorite choices are, and uh, we'll keep rocking and rolling with this. So, so we say here in Bonita, Mexico, buen dia. Thank you.